Hello everyone, I'm Kelvin Fu, Principal Advisor of 167. Thank you for taking the time to tune in this video today. Today's video is something that's really close to my heart. It's fear. It's around unfolding fear. And unfolding fear is something that I have spent a lot of time on, in particular over the last seven years, if I may. There's a story to tell around that, but perhaps for another time. And unfolding fear is something that I have leaned into to understand perhaps areas such as, you know, why and how, as well as when. I like to start off by saying that, you know, many times when we talk about, you know, what's stopping us from who we want to be, it's largely around fear. And like many, I, you know, I, I have done a lot of research into not just quantum physics as well as spiritual philosophy as well as different methods. And there's several articles, you know, if you have read, you know, uh, different articles such as you got um, your Alan Watts, you've got your Eckhart Tolle, you've got your Jiro Krishnamurti, and then, you know, you, you go to different people such as your your Jill Taylors or your Brene Browns, you know, and you've also got your Ram Des. And then as you dive into different, more perhaps more corporate concepts, if you will, or more modern based concepts, you would have, you know, people like, um, you've got your Gary Vee, who is very strategies driven. You've got your Chris Doe, who is very marketing oriented. You've got, you know, different other people such as um, your Joseph Jarosky, who is, you know, uh, somewhere you might heard it's a, it's, it's a corporate lawyer. As well as you've got different other people, you know, um, if you dive into the diary of a CEO, and, you know, you have other areas of podcasts such as Are You Mental and so on and so forth. And just diving into all these articles is something I do on a regular basis. I... I I listen to podcasts an hour a day. I know I know most of you might find it strange, but if you imagine, you know, thirty minutes of traveling time to your work in the morning or to your destination, and thirty minutes traveling time back home, that's an hour. And I use that hour typically not to listen to music, but to tune into podcasts. And the podcasts that I tune to covers typically spiritual or philosophical uh, philosophical topics and that's what I use to unfold in terms of my inner self or some may call it uh, your interior condition or your ecocentric self and it's largely around fear and there are a lot of articles as if you read that you know we start to think or we start to uh, to tune into fear or we start to become who we are f from the third trimester you know um that means in, in when when we we're a little baby before we we're born third trimester all the way to when we are just about i think two years old that's when our brain waves are in delta waves and then from the ages of i think it was two to six years so it's in tether waves and that's where it develops you know, our brain develops the quickest in terms of sensing and, and areas like that. And then from the ages of, I think it was 6 to 12, that's when it's in alpha waves and above 12, we're in beta waves, you know, all the way to you when you're adults. So we, if we understand our, our brains, we actually start to comprehend our surroundings, we start to learn from a third trimester really. And if we understand that then whatever we learn or or development of fear or an influence of fear that then leads us to becoming who we are starts in the third trimester. And many of these then becomes our subconscious mind. Now it depends on what articles you are you you've you've read. Again, I'm not I'm not attesting to be some psychologist or anything like that. I'm just sharing my own methods on what I've research have done. As I say, 95% of of us, uh, you know, it's our subconscious and the five percent is conscious. 
And the best way to explain a subconscious is a bit like, you know, we, our subconscious thinking is, is, I believe it works at a speed of 40 megabits per second as compared to our conscious mind, which is what we see right in front of us. Subconscious is like, you know, perhaps we can stand here and we can actually notice something coming from the sides of our, you know, our vision. That's our subconscious, inst instincts combined. You know, our subconscious, as I mentioned earlier, it's around 40 megabits per second processing and our conscious mind is about, I think it's about four bits or something or, or four megabits. So if we understand our subconscious is actually really powerful and our subconscious is deep within and our subconscious develops from the time of our third trimester um, if, you, if you've dived in articles that I've dived into. Hence, if we understand how we work, a lot of how we work stems off fears, right? Fears meaning perhaps when we're younger, you know, there's certain pressures or certain fears not to become like something or like someone, you know, then that drives our certain behaviors or perhaps when we go through, you know, the instances of rejection and we fear that feeling in us, that's where it then drives a, a change in our behaviors on how we unfold or how we deal with certain things or perhaps you know we in school right we we've, we've just always been under pressure to get good grades and then it drives it and if the fear that fear drives it and wanting in wanting to be perhaps um, perfect or wanting to score higher grades so there's there's lots of thoughts are around fear and at at the workplace typically i i know you know more, most of us we're only all human and at times when we are in a perhaps a, a challenging situation where we are with someone with your staff with a team or anyone could even be with someone senior to you a lot of us expect that doesn't mean that that uh, a senior management or senior executive means that this person will be a lot more i don't want to use the word astute but a lot more dynamic in terms of people management but I don't think that's that's um, that's a good way of thinking. I think it doesn't matter whether you're senior, you're senior executive, or your 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 ground crew person. When I say ground crew, it means you know everyone within the team. That's not an executive. You're no you're no more human than than anyone, right? So for us to sometimes think that maybe an executive, it's a lot more dynamic or fluent in those kind of behaviors. It's not actually good, you know. It's similarly, when an executive or someone senior forgets that, you know, uh, they were once there as well, and perhaps they're a bit more demanding, then that's obviously not a good area as well. Hence, fear, you know, is something that's not experienced by not just someone within the team that's junior, if we, for, for a better word, but also someone who's senior in the team. And when we start to understand fear, that, that fear exists and that fear is able to, and, and fear influences and molds us from the time of our third trimester. Hence, that's why we're all different, right? We're all exposed to different elements of fear. We might be similar in some ways, but we are different. And when we then understand what fear then leads us to do and how it impacts us, right? Then we understand that whatever what what we see in terms of the behaviors of others is typically unintentional. I I personally when I when I when I'm in a difficult situation, I I never think that the person's behavior is intention intentional. And what I usually do is to dive deeper into what causes that. And one of the things I want to do today in the later part of this video is to take you through a method that I use. It's call it a map or a framework on how I unfold fears or how I unfold feelings of fear that I may have. And it could be situations where I feel that maybe someone has a an intention to to upset me or to maybe cause me grief, for a better word, and then I try to understand it. Or it might be when I feel that someone has an intention on actually caring for me, then I, I also wonder that at the same time. Fear is crippling. As we, we know, fear leads to things like an increased heart rate. Then those fear also leads to an increase in cortisol levels of our body, if you have done those research. And also, then that leads to us going to fight or flight mode. You know, and when we start diving the fight or flight mode, you know, all our energies go into fight, for example, or, or flight, whichever. And when that happens, then 
typically a lot of us might not be behaving the way we want to be because the person that we want to be then steps back and another person comes forward right and if you start if you, if you can imagine many of us I'm not saying all of us but some of us many of us might have different different faces we might have our or, or, or different per, people or personalities where at work we might be one one person the perhaps confident person who wants to let everyone know that hey you know um, you know I've got zero room for error I'm hard working on this and that you know you only see the best part of me and at home you might see this person who is the you know it's a bit more connected and but however do not want to demonstrate fear towards their own family members or, or you know or because you we want to make let our family members know that we are strong and we want to be there for them so it's not all deliberately bad i think we're going to take none of that it's not it's none, none of this conversation or none of this um video it's about good or bad it's just who we are and and also uh, you know if if we on 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 fall further some of these personalities could be with with friends or with with partners i i did struggle with that for a bit where i have different personalities because you know the the fear of wanting to be successful or work meant i put on a persona or i just say it fake it to you make it if you will or the fear of being who you are at home you know made, made me uncomfortable i was someone could have been i was someone else Similarly with friends and different people. And over the past seven years, as I mentioned earlier, it's I started to to merge that and I started connecting with the fears that prevent me from being who I am um, in every situation. So just that one self. And the what what that method I'm gonna share is one of the main methods that I use to unfold. And it's it's unfolding not through not just through journaling or through ref reflection, but also through meditation. I've done courses such as Site K, if some of you have heard before, and it's largely around what I view as a mixture of kinesiology, uh, perhaps self hypnosis, if you will, and meditation, and that's the ability to unfold fear. Hence, un unfolding fear is something that I've, I value a great deal. Uh, and, and I'm saying that because it's, it's human, right? It's human to, to feel fear. It's human to be exposed to situations where we might be more tapered towards negativity or, or feelings of hurt, sorrow, pain, hence that, that, that might make, make us upset. It's, it's just human, right? And what, if what we can do more of is to unfold those fears or what we're feeling as well as help others enable the unfolding of their fears, then in my experience, we see a very different level of relationship, not just at home, but also at work. Hence, unfolding of fears has been, you know, um, something that I feel it's, 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 it's critical. When we unfold fears, it also allows us to be in the present, letting, you know, that's letting, letting go, which is the past, that's letting come, which is the future, and so that we can let be. Fear, it's the past, right? It's the past where we remember the fears, and if we are still holding on to the past, that means we're not letting those fears go. And fear is also, or then also more into the future that we, we want to happen or we want to materialize and we were doing that then we're not letting come letting come means just letting the situation unfold right we, if we're not letting come it's a bit like saying oh we all knew that covid was going to happen in 2019 and that is not so so if we can let go and if we can let come then we can let be and then letting be is the, then becomes the ability to have unfolded our fears or to allow our fears to if i may say step aside and settle on either side so that we can let be what on, on what we need right now in this moment saying letting be doesn't mean to in that sense to spend all your money because you're going to live life to the fullest you're going to let be for today i'm not I'm not saying any of that i'm saying letting be is the ability to stop and say hey what are my top three intentions right now what is the situation that's right ahead of me that I need to do right now? 
because wanting to do so many things that might only take place in five years it's not the best use of our time right and to say that we 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 can all multitask as human is not exactly accurate either unless we are computers running you know different uh, you know hundred core processing power we are not we have there's only one of us and we want to be able to focus and be of service to a particular person or situation at any point in time right not not we we, we can't possibly split ourselves up which is not human Hence, to let be means to be able to unfold your fears or to let your fears go. When you can, when you let be, um, that's when you, I believe, that's when you can be who you want to be. Because if you're hanging on to fears, that means you're not letting go of the past. And if you're not letting go of the past, even because you're hanging on to fears, then you're not letting come the future. It means you can't really let be. So whoever you are, you are at that point point in time or the present point in time is basically a, uh, a largely a mixture of fears i'm not sure I've, i'm not there i'm not sure if anyone if there's anyone out there who actually live a life without um any, any kind of fear from the past i'm sure there'll be some but but the purpose of this conversation is not to dive into psychopathy or or, or sociopathy it's not not that at all it's just, um, you know, it's just to generally broadly explain what fear does to us. Okay, um, I'm going to switch screens and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out my method on how I unfold fears and I hope that might be useful to everyone, you know, when, when the moment arises. Okay. So what, what what you see behind is a PowerPoint slide. I I should now be on your left, uh, left hand side. There. And so a lot of what I mentioned earlier was fear starts from you know when we are third trimester, right? And so this is this is a combination of all the different articles that I have read and unfolded over the many years. This is not a a a, a theory. It's not a science, um, science article or science video at all. This is just my method. Please, please take note of that. And if it works for you, then it's great. Okay. And and if it something you want to use as a baseline for your unfoldings, great as well. What matters to me most is that this benefits someone. You know, you know, and and whether it's it's something that is a baseline method that you might create for on your own or something that might use completely. So we spoke a lot about conditioning and conditioning is the start of how I'm I'm, I'm for my fear. So usually when I'm in a situation, it could be any situation, perhaps I'm sitting down and and you know I'm starting a project and I'm lots of worries come in my mind. For example, I'm going oh sh oh damn we, we need to do this, we need to do that, we are, and then I start to think about, oh, you know, this is five years down the road, and I start to get worried about what if people, you know, people are not supporting what is in that. That's when I start to go, all right, what are my top three fears? And then I start to unfold them. Unfold them could be in, on the spot, it could be perhaps over the next uh, over the next week, or as it happens, because I'm letting come, right? And typically, what I do is, if I if I decide to unfold at that point in time, and it's not, you know, it's not uh, palatable in what I'm feeling, then I go, hey, it's not it's not that time to unfold at the moment. I'm just I'm going to leave it, right, just to let be, and it usually comes, it always comes back again later on on when I got to unfold, and that's what I that's what I was trying to describe in terms of letting go. Letting come and letting be. So conditioning is the first area. And then, so conditioning is largely around um, our upbringing. Okay. Um, school, if you can imagine. And bear with me, uh, bear with me as, I, as I put this together. You know, you got things like um, upbringing, school, religion. Okay, um, family environment, and of course you have got you know um, we may call it the public environment, which is 
your your social system that you were born into the country yeah and then and 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 conditioning pretty much starts when you know third trimester i mentioned and then when when you've got conditioning that's where you start to develop an image right so an image on on what what good looks like really or what good looks like what what good looks like is subjective okay what good looks like to you may not be what good looks like to me but it's what good looks like right it's what good looks like okay and 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 these images could mean a a uh, these images could be a picture of what success looks like okay or what failure looks like or what sadness looks like happiness etc okay so that's the image right so for example if you grew up in an environment where you see people driving bmw success success right because perhaps um you know perhaps you were born in a family um that was struggling and you you always had this image where your father's boss drives a you know nice fancy car and you go oh that's successful and because in your family you know you also have conversations amongst your or relatives that oh this guy's bought a a whatever hsv or or it's this person has bought a ferrari and you go oh that's because it's really successful right so that's the image so with the conditioning exposed to and then that's the image in your mind on what success looks like Again, it's not good, it's not bad, it's it's just what it is, right? What good looks like to you may not be what good looks like to someone else. What looks bad to others may what maybe what good might maybe what good looks like to us. Okay. And then from conditioning, then what you have got is the the thought, okay? It's it's the way we think. Okay. So thought, right? Because you, you have now got an image on what good looks like to you. And that now becomes the way you unfold, the way you think. So when you look at a situation, for for example, how we think, uh, referencing the images we hold, okay? So, for example, if you you know if you walk on the street, you see someone wearing a suit and tie, or someone wearing a nice, expensive clothes. You know, the first thing we go is, oh, this person must be on big bucks. Or you know, immediately we go. The first thing we you know we 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 look at maybe a a uh, a a person wearing a a, a cook's hat. Straight away we go, oh, this person must be a really good cook, or this person must love cooking, right? So we so we have got those thoughts. So, so if we were in a in a we were, if we were in an environment where we had that kind of conditioning where we were told or exposed to, um, we then start to create these images in our mind on what certain things should look like, and then we start to develop those um, for better ways on how we think, right? And with thought, then we then have got desires so if we have for example if if we always felt that um, when, when we're conditioned we were exposed to well there was a situation where there was there was a medical emergency and it touched our hearts and we always wanted to become a doctor then then creates the image we want to become a doctor our thought then always becomes you know doctor i want to be a doctor uh, sorry, the, uh, good visions about doctors and what doctors do that, and that will become a desire on wanting to be a doctor. Hence, desires then become what I want, right? What I want. Again, it's nothing good or bad. What what I want may not be what you want. What you want may not be what I want, right? And then from desires then, because we have the desire in us, we then have the intentions. So what you see here is I'm 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 breaking up in I'm breaking into process on how I, I I think right and then when when you have the intention in your mind so you have the desire your heart says you know I, I want to do that and then then you set an intention right and then so the intention could be something you 
Oops. Something you set at the start of the year. Okay, so you're, you're setting that objective. So you got an objective in your head. And then, as you can imagine, once you have set your intention, then the next thing that you will look into is you want to act. Okay, so you got your action. Okay, so what, what, what we see here is a, a cycle. I might clean this up a little bit. Um, just move it a little bit closer. So we got a cycle here, that cycle here that starts with your conditioning. You've got your image. You've got your intention. I'm going to move this to the right. Just to give a bit more room. All right. You got your desire or desires. Let me bring the S there. You got your thought and your image. Okay. So we can see this cycle here. And two more things here is you have then whatever action you then create then has a reaction. Okay. And the so the action here is um, I'm gonna say achieving our intention. And your reaction is basically the consequences. Okay, I'm going to say the consequences just for a uh, easy way of describing it. Okay, and then, okay, and then the cycle goes because the consequences could be us or could be others, right? And then that then goes back into our conditioning. Okay. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just scribble this thing. So I'm going to go this way, right? Oops. Oh dear. There we go. All right. Thank you for bearing with me here as I draw these arrows. That doesn't look really nice, but I think that would do. And then finally that. Okay. So we start, we got conditioning, image, thought, desire, intention, action, reaction, conditioning. And so usually what I do when I reverse this, right, then I go my reaction. These were the consequences that happened. What did I do? What did I do? Okay. Then I go, why did I do? What was my intention in doing what I did? What brought about my intention? What, what was it that I wanted, that my desire? What brought about my desire? How was I thinking? What was I thinking? What was the image that I had? You know, so I start digging back. And then finally going to, how was I influenced? You know, at, at what point in my life? Was there something that was an onset when I was younger? Was there something that happened recently, perhaps an event that was a bit more traumatic in that sense? Or perhaps there was, uh, it, it might not all be traumatic. It might be a, a feeling of elation that led us to feeling that, hey, this is what we really want, right? Because of the, the level of happiness of that sensation that we had, that, you know, that, that condition. So it's not all there bad. But when I'm in a situation, I usually ask myself, right, and, and, and I go back, go backwards. Or if I'm sitting down and I'm going, perhaps I'm starting a new project and I'm, I'm fearful and then I go, well, why, 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 am I, why am I fearful? Then, then I, I keep stepping back onto what was the, you know, what was the action, the action that led to that? What was my intention in my mind? What was desire? Same thing, what's the thought, was the image? And, and, and then I go back to perhaps a particular moment in which, you know, I, I, I might have been, 
you know, a, a little bit more um, uncomfortable in that sense that led me to that conditioning. And within something to add here, which I which I learned was in between thought and desire, there's a thing called sensation because thought sometimes may need sensation to to trigger something. Okay, and that. That sensation could be a bo bodily feeling, for example. That means sensation, right? Or, or a particular sensation that you're after. You know, for example, you might remember an effect of alcohol, for example, on what how it makes you feel, or a particular um, external influence that then leads you to driving a desire. Okay. And and as we add into our subconscious and conscious, what I've also started learning is that if you look at everything else before from thought to conditioning, that's really to me developed during our to me it's like our subconscious thoughts. If you if and I, I use that to relate to, to my thought process, subconscious, and, and, and of course, then you've got your, your conscious. Let me spell that. Conscious. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, and then you've got your conscious. And that's here. Okay, so I go typically what I do is everything from here to here, and everything from There to there. There you go. And as they say, your subconscious is ninety five percent of your consciousness, and your conscious self is five percent. Okay, I I I hope that that provides a some kind of framework uh, or a a method on that might help you unfold your fears. This is this is my method. It's it's not it's not some PhD paper. It's not some you know uh, deep <laughs> kind of a you know what I mean, a high technical documentation, but this is how I unfold my thoughts. And this is a very, it's it's a similar method that I use at work when 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 I'm working with my teams, when I'm en enabling my teams. Enabling is all, all, it's a lot to do with, to enable my team, I need to unfold their fears. The, the, the my, my teams, my, my, my teams are good at what they do. I, I do not need to teach them how to be even, you know, I do not teach them how to be the best in their commercial, the technical or the procurement roles. They are good at what they do, right? And what I need to do is I need to be able to unfold their fears. And to unfold their fears means the first thing I need to do is to unfold my fears. And unfolding my fears could mean not being afraid to be vulnerable with my team and if i'm vulnerable um, and vulnerability is not just a discrete item right it's not a unique item that's just one we might we might have fear of being vulnerable in different types of situation or different types of environments and so on and if and if enabling is all about the, the ability to help your team unfold the fears and that starts with you 
then we need to, you know, which is probably something that's not taught in school, we need to know how to unfold our fears. Hence, this method is something that I've used. And I know I know this seems like a a a, a multiple level, but um, you you could collapse this in to, to you know to suit what you need. And you know, to what you need to make it easy understandable. But I think if I believe that if you can cycle through each of these um, areas, like I like I do, I think it'll be helpful for you in unfolding your own views, and also it'll be helpful for you to help someone else unfold their fears, right? Because then you'll be enabling them to be who they want to be in their environment. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in this video. I I sincerely hope that this has been helpful. This is something that's really personal and close to me. And I hope that this unfolding fears model may, you know, may make a difference to you and, and your lives, not just in work, but also at home. Thank you.